All right, we're back and this is page 48 of math analysis. We are in notes five. We just graphed sine, cosine, cosecant, secant. And now what we're gonna do is graph tangent um, and then we'll graph cotangent and then we'll know all the graphs of the trig functions, which is a really big accomplishment. So let's see what we can do uh, with what we know and see if it helps us create the graph of tangent. So from working with the unit circle, we already know the natural period of tangent. We worked that out in notes, I don't know, four maybe or three somewhere. Um, and, that's, uh, and thus of cotangent as well, because tangent and cotangent have to have the same period because they're reciprocals. What is the period of tangent? Well, we figured out that the period of tangent was pi. So we definitely know that now. Um, so period equals pi. This is, without a doubt, the number one mistake that people make when they are graphing tangent. Uh, and the reason for that is you get so used to using 2 pi because of sine, cosine, uh, secant, cosecant, which are more common graphs. You get so used to it that you mess up and you, instead of doing uh, you know, the period divided by uh, b, you end up doing 2 pi divided by b. Big mistake. So uh, we're going to have to face that a lot. Um, so let's, let's see if we can avoid it. Hopefully we can. You'll never know if I mess it up because I'll just redo the video. Um, but trust me, every once in a while I do mess that up. What identity do we know that relates tangent to the other trig functions? So think about, um, if you don't remember this, which you may not at this point, uh, we said that tangent of theta is y over x. But we also know that um, sine of theta is y, and we know that cosine of theta is x. So the identity that we actually know is that the tangent of theta is sine of theta over cosine of theta. So tangent is sine over cosine. Um, that's a fact that we can use a lot. One thing that we will know because of that is that if cosine of theta equals zero, you'll try to divide by zero, tangent is gonna be undefined. So I guess is that maybe, just wanna, you want to have your grammar down. So tangent will be undefined. Anytime cosine is zero, tangent is undefined, which means the graph will have a vertical asymptote um, because that's the kind of undefined that you get here. And then if sine is equal to zero, then tangent will also equal zero. So the zeros of sine and the zeros of tangent are actually the same. Sine and tangent are actually really similar when you're really close to zero, like really close to zero, then they kind of stop. Um, Okay, so we know a bunch of patterns for sine and cosine, right? Uh, they're all basically like alternating uh, I am, I am, I am, and then you capitalize every other M. Uh, tangent has a pattern too. Tangent's pattern is a lot more fun to say, I think. Uh, it's omha. So what on earth does that mean? We will find out. But actually, when you go to graph, you don't use omha, you use the even better pattern of Mahalam. Okay, Mahalam, what on earth? Let's figure out if we can figure out what these, let's figure out if we can figure out. We can figure it out. Let's figure out what these mean. Uh, so we'll do that by just looking at this table, right? So uh, you may not remember all these, but we definitely know that like, uh, we know, well, you should have them memorized, so I'm just gonna fill them in. So the tangent of zero is definitely zero. The tangent of pi over four is one. The tangent of pi over two is undefined because sine of pi over two is one, but cosine of pi over two is zero. You're trying to divide by zero, so that's undefined. And then uh, tangent's an odd function, so the tangent of negative pi over four is the negative of the tan of pi over four, so negative one. And then uh, when you get to negative pi over two, the sine of negative pi over two is negative one. The cosine, however, is zero. You can't divide by zero, so we're undefined again. So if you look at this, what's gonna happen? You're gonna get an asymptote, you're going to get a low point, a middle point, a high point, and then another asymptote, which means that you get A L M H A. That's how I actually remember how to graph tangent. I just think like, oh, it should be, well, I think it should be Mahalam. Why should it be Mahalam? Because you should 
really when you're graphing, you end up starting, not should, but you end up, you start here and then you go um, high and then asymptote. And then because you're continuing, you'll go low middle. So that's Mahalam. All right. Let's see if we can create the graph of tangent. This is going to be the worst. You're never going to graph tangent like this again. Just I'm warning you right now, this is the worst. Um, and I have a lot of colors available to me, so I will make use of them. So what we want to do is first graph cosine, but like it's a guide function. So we're going to graph cosine like it's a guide function. I'm going to try to get it in the middle, but I think there's an even number of these. So let's go here. And then, uh, so what do we got above this? One, two, three. Here, I'm counting. One, two, three, four, five above. One, two, three, four, five, six below. Nothing we can do about that. So uh, that's good. Now I want to graph cosine. So I'll put in, uh, I'm going to put in the y-axis, which again, I feel like there's an even number of these. So I don't think that, woof. look at that. Um, so we get that. And then I'm going to put, I'm going to say this is one, and this is negative one. And all right, so two boxes per increment. So this will be pi over two. And then it's actually better if you don't label too many things here. So I'm just gonna label, uh, so pi over two and then pi, three pi over two, two pi, and then another tick mark. And then just make sure you're going two boxes. Negative pi, oh, negative, negative pi. And yet I write negative two pi. Negative pi, three or two, negative two pi, and then you get one more. Okay, so we're gonna dot in cosine, but as if it's a guide function. So I will use a, a really gross color for that. This. Kind of the, the better job you do here, like the better it looks, but you know, I do not claim to be great at this. Like I'm really good at finding all the like, oh man, no way. Uh, I'm good at finding all the attributes, but in terms of like creating the graph, hmm, you know, I try, it's not a strength. Continues. Okay, so that's our cosine. Um, so because of this, anywhere uh, cosine is equal to zero, because cosine is the denominator, sine over cosine. Anywhere cosine is zero, vertical asymptote. So let's put those in. So here we go. This is the only time in your life you will do this, probably. Because we're going to end up just using the pattern. But we're going to, we're looking to see, you know, can we figure out where it all comes from by looking at the interaction of these graphs, which is kind of a neat skill. I don't feel like people do that anymore. Like you used to, you would look at like y equals x squared, and then you'd look at y equals x, the two graphs, and then you'd be like, what does x squared plus x look like? And you literally just add the y values, it's called like addition of ordinates. Um, and you kind of like gain a lot of weird insights that you just like, you don't know what you're missing because you're not doing it. Um, but nobody asked you to do it. It's not your fault. Also, maybe calculators have supplanted a lot of that. I don't know. You got to keep up a little, uh, little banter while you're doing these boring line things. All right, there we go. Cosine, and we got the vertical asymptotes of tangent. They're in there. That's good. All right, next thing we're going to do, we're going to put sine on here, but as a guide function. So at least we already did like most of the work. So sine starts and be here. Then, uh, all right, so let's, let's see if we can do this. It's going to be like this, and then back down. This is not perfect, or maybe even good. It's going to be like this. I'm like trying really hard, you may notice, to have them intersect on like, I really want the two graphs to intersect here. Um, like I want them to in to hit each other at that value so that my argument going forward is better. That's I'm putting effort into that, which is why it looks a little weird at some points. Here, like I really want them to intersect at that point. And so I just make it happen, 
which is probably not the right way to do it, but oh boy, go back this way. And then I really want them to intersect there. I mean, maybe it does make the graph more accurate. Hard, well, I mean, I, in some ways it must, in other ways, probably not so much. I really want them to intersect there. Okay, so the zeros of the sine graph are the zeros of tangent because sine is in the numerator of sine. If the numerator is zero, then function must be zero. So we get a zero, we get a zero, we get a zero. Uh, all right, we're almost there. Okay, now, anytime sine and cosine are equal, since tangent is sine over cosine, tangent will be one. Everywhere sine and cosine are equal, tangent will be one. So here they are equal. So that'll be one. Uh, that'll be one. Uh, this, is, this is looking kind of pretty okay. Uh, what, what is happening over here? Oh, they're equal here. And then they're equal here. I really couldn't find that one. The one between negative uh, pi and negative pi over two, I like just couldn't find. Uh, and then, is there another one? Yeah, like kind of here, I guess. Oop, nope, wrong. It's gotta be one. One, dude. Oh my God, all wrong, all wrong. Hold on, one, not negative one. Got excited. That's why. It's supposed to be up at one, not negative one. And then over here, it's gonna be at one again. Okay, now the last part. Anywhere they're equal but opposite, it should be negative one. Now these are the hardest ones to find because they're not exactly intersecting, but look at what's happening here. Uh, so for example, we have a thing, then one increment, a thing, one increment, a thing. Feels like there should be one increment and a thing, and there is. So we're gonna put our negative one here. That's where they're equal but opposite. So sine is radical two over two, cosine is negative radical two over two. You get negative one when you divide those. So at all of our missing increments is really where this is gonna happen. So you can fill those in, hopefully. Again, this is the only time you'll ever do this. It's kind of a weird exercise, but I'd like, over time I've grown to sort of like this exercise a little bit more. All right, now we can fill in the chart, in the graph. So I'm just gonna fill it in. Um, and what happens is this, uh, you're going to go, so it looks almost a little like X cubed. So it's going to be like this, it's gonna come like this, like this. So the key to getting a useful tangent graph, don't get obsessed with trying to get toward the asymptote. See, I did it. Don't get obsessed with trying to get near the asymptote too quickly. It's a gentle process. And the more stretched out, oh, I, I'm missing one. There we go. The more stretched out your graph is, the harder it is to make. That's going to be a key thing as we do this. So this, it looks a little like X cubed. So it's kind of like that. And we're just trying to like go for it. So there you go. That one was pretty good. So don't get obsessed with trying to get toward the asymptotes too fast, or your graph, if you try to get to the asymptote too fast, you end up with like, point, point, point. You end up like, like you get all these extra turns that like shouldn't really be there. Um, so don't do that. That's not what we want. Um, because we know the asymptotes there. We know that as, as X you know, approaches it, you know what's gonna happen. Um, but I feel like in like algebra two, the asymptotes are so important. You got to get to them really fast. That one was pretty good. There we go. That is a graph of tangent. Um, we will never be doing that again, but that's the interaction between the graph of sine, cosine, tangent, where cosine is zero, tangent's undefined, where sine is zero, tangent is zero. Um, if sine and cosine are equal to each other, you get one. If they're equal but opposite, you get negative one. So the key thing here to pick up, notice for tangent, you actually want to go one box per increment. If you go one box per increment, you get a pretty good looking graph and you can put a sine or cosine graph on the same grid, which is impossible if you decide to do two boxes per increment for tangent. So uh, the next thing we'll do is graph a bunch of them. Uh, but I will come back in the next video and do that because I bet this video is pretty long because that takes a really long time. So 
I will see you there.